you're going to need to understand APIs if you're going to do, well, anything. So while tools like Zapier and Make.com can be really helpful to connect to APIs if you're not a developer, sometimes you need to go the extra mile. So for example, if you have a tool to connect to that you don't have an integration for, you're going to need to use the APIs for it. Or if you want to do something custom with a tool that you're using, again, APIs. So in this video, we're going to walk through two different examples, one of them using Airtable and the other one with HubSpot where we're going to retrieve information from a CRM. Now, for both of these examples, I'm going to be using a tool called Postman that lets you send API calls and see the responses. So this is going to make it really easy to be able to test APIs and is likely going to be your go-to when you're playing around with a new one to figure out how it works. So let's dive into the first example using Airtable. Now, before we start, it's important to know what Airtable is. So Airtable is basically a spreadsheet. So we're going to have an example with a to-do list, and we're going to use two types of requests, a get request and a post request. Now, a get request retrieves information. So it gets information from the spreadsheet. And a post request sends information to the spreadsheet. So this is my Airtable. And what I've got here is a table. So an Airtable bases are tables. They let you just create a spreadsheet. Now, in this table, I've got a to-do list. So I've got a task, I've got notes, and I've got a status for that list. So you can see here, I've got some tasks with gym, groceries, and make a video. And I've got some notes as well as the status. Now, I want to be able to retrieve information from here because let's say I am building an app or I've got something on my other end where I want to actually get information to tell the user what the task is. So voice let me do this all the time because when I'm building an AI assistant, I want to be able to reach out to other softwares and bring in information. So if I log into my AI assistant, I want to be able to look into a spreadsheet and say, hey, here are your tasks for today. To do this, I want to be able to get to their documentation. So I've got the documentation open here. But if you're new to Airtable, what you can do is access the documentation just by hitting help and then going to API documentation. API documentation is pretty straightforward and they all kind of follow a similar structure where they give you an example uh, of the APIs. And sometimes they actually give you a little snippet to preview how you might use them. So in this Airtable one, if I go to over here, table one table, this is going to tell me all the different API calls that I can make and what I can do with the Airtable API. So I can see here, I've got something called fields. I've got list records, which is a get request. I've got retrieve a record, create records, update records, and delete records. So pretty standard stuff for a spreadsheet, all things that I can do manually or through the API. So let's go over to get records. This is where I want to start because I want to be able to retrieve all the stuff that's in my to-do list. Now you can see here on the right-hand side, I've got CURL in JavaScript. Now, JavaScript is if you're writing this in JavaScript. So if you're building an app, for example, and you're writing it right in there, but CURL is when you're just using the API itself. So if you're using a low code tool or a tool that's retrieving APIs, this is probably what you're going to use. And it's the most straightforward one to understand. There's a couple pieces in here that are really important. You can see here that the CURL has an API URL that I can use to be able to retrieve information from my spreadsheet. Now, looking at the actual URL, there's a couple pieces to it. So this first one here is the URL that I'm actually using to interact with Airtable. The second part is an ID. And in this case, this is my base ID. So you can see here in the introduction, it says the IP of this date, this base is this thing here. And I can see that it's in the URL. So this is telling it to point at the database that I've set up. Now, this part here is, again, another identifier right before the question mark. And this is telling me, okay, within this database, which table am I looking at? Now, what's important to note is that this question mark here indicates where the break is between the identifiers and the parameters. Now, you might hear this used a couple of times, and you can see here in the documentation, it says format the results with the following query parameters. Usually, you're using parameters to do something specific. So in this case, I'm telling the API to hey, say, hey, look at this base and look at this table view. And now I'm saying return records. I want three records return maximum. And the view is like a grid view. So that might be something specific to Airtable. And if I do this correctly, this should be the example response where I have three records and it looks like it's pulling everything. So the status, the task, and then even if I have notes, it's pulling that too. So this is perfect because this is actually what I want. And now let's figure out how to actually do this. So to start playing around with this API, I want to be able to use a tool that can make calls to the API and retrieve this information. Now, sometimes you can actually just use your browser. So for example, if I go ahead and paste this in here, 
this will actually call the API and return a response. But you'll see that it says error type authentication required, meaning I need to add a couple more things in here to be able to use it. And I can see in the API documentation that I require a secret API token to be able to use this. So I want to be able to get in here and modify it. So instead of using the URL, we're going to use a tool called Postman. Now, Postman is just the way I learned to use it. There's a ton of other tools out here like it, but it's pretty simple. It just allows you to make requests to an API and modify all the parameters with it in a pretty easy UI. So when you sign up for an account with Postman, you're going to go over to your workspace. And in your workspace, you have collections. So you see I've got a couple here. Let's make a new one, and we're going to call it Airtable. And in here, we're now going to add a request. So we're going to make our first API call. So you'll see that there's a couple different API calls that you can use. So the first one is a get, which retrieves information, and then post, which sends information. These are the main two that you're going to be using. The other two that are really relevant are put and patch, which allows you to create updates, and delete, which allows you to delete a file. Now, you can see here I've got a bar for the URL. So this is where we're going to enter the API URL that we want to be able to hit. And we've also got fields for authorization, headers, body, and a couple other things. Now, params is where we're going to add our parameters. So as you saw before, where it was like max results equals three and a couple other things. And headers is where we're going to add in our headers. And body, we won't need to use for this until later. But let's head back to the API docs and start to see if we can make sense of it. So here's the API docs, and you'll notice a couple things right off the bat. So I've got my URL here, and I've got something that looks says H. So H is your headers. So these are the things that you want to include in this headers section here to get passed along with your, with your URL call. So I have one header here, which is called authorization. So let's go ahead and paste authorization in the key, and the value is going to be bearer and then your secret token. So I need to actually get my token from Airtable, but we'll do that in a second. Next is that I want to take the API and I want to do it right before the parameters because we're going to add our own parameters. Now, that should be all I need. And let's go ahead and see what the parameters are that I can add. So over here, Airtable is documenting all the different types of parameters that I can use. So it looks like I can modify the fields. So for example, I can return data from a certain column, so task or notes. There is something called filter by formula, which allows me to search or filter the view. There's max records, page size, sort. So a whole bunch of things that I can tinker with. But really, I don't actually need any of these I'm because I just want to return everything from the spreadsheet. So I should be OK just to be able to use this API string and this header without any parameters right now. So let's figure out how to get my API key now. Most APIs that you will use are going to have a key or some sort of token that you need to get that shows that you have access to this API. So in Airtable, if I go back to my dashboard here and I go to Developer Hub, this is probably where I'm going to get my token. So you can see here, I have the option to create a personal access token, an API key, OAuth integrations, and a couple other things. Normally, you go to API key, but with Airtable, it looks like they're going to be removed. So instead, I'm going to create a personal access token to use the API. So we're going to call this demo video. And I'm going to grant this, a, this token certain scopes. So this creates limits on the actual token. So when someone's using this token, they can only do specific things. So if I hit scope, let's go ahead and see what's in here. So I've got record data and comments. I've got base schema, advanced developer features, and user metadata. So I want to be able to read and write all of the records in here because I want to be able to retrieve information and send information. So it looks like I'm going to need data records read, and I'm going to need data records write. Great. So this should allow me to actually retrieve information, and write means you're putting information in. It looks like we need to give it access to a certain area base. So if I go here and search through what I have, this base was called example. So this API token is not created, and it only has the access to the example base that I've made, and it can only read and write. So let's go ahead and copy this and just save it. And now we can go ahead and make our API call. So if I go ahead and hit bear space, and I've got the key here, let's hit send and see what comes up. Great. So you can see here, I've actually gotten a response from the API. So now I was able to use the get request, and what did it retrieve? So if I go ahead and hit pretty here, this is just going to structure it for me. JSON is a structure that it's retrieved in. 
And so this basically puts it into an object format where it's structured into different objects. So you can see here that records is the entire object. And then I've got smaller objects within here. So it looks like I've got a couple things. So one, two, three, four. And within here, it looks like each of these is actually a row in my database. So each row has an ID. And you can see here that the fields are the actual values. So I've got my status field, my task, and my notes. And in the Airtable, in my actual table itself, you can see I've got my task, notes, and status. So what's cool here is that this is in real time. So you can see that I changed the status to in progress. So if I go ahead and change this back to to do, and I make a new request here, you'll see that this has now been updated. So to do is make video. So that's now, I've now used the API call for the get request. And now I can start to retrieve this information. So what's important now to know with JSON structures is usually they can contain multiple values. And, and when they do, it's called an array. So an array is like a list of things. And so you can see here, I've got an array um, and I've actually got arrays within arrays, right? So I've got a field that has a list of things. So this is an array. My notes actually has a list of things. So this is also an array. And then within here, I've got uh, a list of object IDs, which is another array. And so what's important to note is I can actually reference specific items in my software. So for example, if I wanted to reference the first object that comes up here and I want to save the ID, I would likely say records zero dot ID. And that says records zero is the first item. So records zero is this first one here dot ID. And so if I'm writing a system that would tell the system to say, hey, look at the first item in records, which is here, and then save the ID. Now, with the other part within my, my get request is that I can add parameters. So you saw here on the actual API docs that there are different parameters that I can add. And one of them, for example, was max records. So let's go ahead and copy this. And we want to add this in here because let's say I just want to return one. So for parameters, we're going to paste max records. And it looks like the value is supposed to be a number. So let's hit max records is one. So if I send this back now, you'll see that it only returned one record. Now, if I change two, and you'll notice here that it's adding this parameter to the URL like we did before. Now it's going to return two. And if I totally take this out, so I'll just uncheck this to remove it, it just returns every item. And so this allows me to start narrowing down the results that I'm receiving from the API to be able to match this. Another powerful parameter that we can use is called filter formula here. So this allows us to apply a filter on the information that we're receiving. So this is great when you want to exclude things or even search for specific information. Now, let's say, for example, on my, my task list here, I have an empty cell. And you can see that in my API call, it actually returns this empty cell. I, I don't want this because this doesn't have a task in it, which means it's not real. And so what I can do here is I can actually use a filter by formula string parameter. So let's add it in here. And then I can add in what it says here. So not task equals blank. So it's going to look for anything where the task is not blank into the value. Now, if I hit send here, you'll see that it returned all three items, but it left out this blank one. Now, if I reverse it, so instead of saying not task equals blank, it's just task equals blank, it only returns the empty cell. So this is how you would add parameters to start narrowing down the results that you receive from the API to make your and your to make the information you receive more manageable. So it's fine with three items, but you can imagine that this list had a hundred items for different days. I might only want to return whatever is actually due today rather than a hundred items on this list. So that's the get request. And it's pretty straightforward in terms of just actually being able to receive information. Now let's move on to a post request, which sends information and is slightly different. Before we continue, if you're finding this video helpful, remember to subscribe and leave a comment, letting me know what I should do a tutorial on next. So now I want to go ahead and create a record. Now to do this, I'm going to use a post request because this is actually going to send information to Airtable. Now you can see here that most of this is the same. So I still have an API call here. I still have a header, but I have a new one called content type. And then I also have this new field called data. So this is indicated by a D, whereas headers are indicated by an H. And in data, I've actually got some information that I need to pass through. So it's a little bit more complicated, but still not too bad. Now, if I go over to my postman and let's add a new request. So now what I want to do is change this to post because this is going to be a post request and let's move over some of the information. 
So I'm going to copy my URL here. So you can see that it's got the app ID and then the table. And now I want to get into adding my headers and parameters. Now, this content type header is important because it's telling the application what type of format to expect this data in. And now for the data, we also want to be able to add this somewhere. So what we want to do is go to the body and we're going to hit raw. So this allows us to actually just paste in the code itself. So if I go back here and let's record everything between the bracket. So we don't want this apostrophe and we paste it in here. Now we can start to generate this. So looking at this documentation, this is how the API works. So I can include an array of up to 10 records. And you remember that an array is just a list. So I can include basically a list of 10 different records. And each of these objects should have the values that are indicated by a field name or a field ID. So you can see here under records, it's got a list of two of them. So it's got fields, task is gym, status is to do, task is groceries, notes is care and celery tomatoes. If this is successful, it should show me response with the items that I've created, but it's actually giving them an ID now. And I'll actually see them created in my Airtable here. So let's make a new task called edit video. So what I want to do is hop over and let's look at my items here. So I only want to create one task, so I don't need both of these. So when you're working with arrays, you can see that the arrays themselves are indicated by brackets. So in here, I've got one array. So I've got task and status. And then this is in a other list, which is indicated by these two. And this is one object that I want to create. Here's another one that I want to get rid of. Now, what's important is I can go ahead and delete this, but you'll see that there's a comma here and I want to get rid of this because you only have commas between the items. You don't have a comma at the end of the list. So you can see that there's nothing here. So if I remove this, I want to make sure that I remove the comma. Otherwise, it won't work. Now, on the actual items, let's go ahead and make the task edit video and the status is to do. And let's add one more because I want to add notes here. And so my column is called notes, notes. So we'll call this and I'm going to add a string here, which is just make it look good. Great. And I'm just going to compare this to the example I've got here. So you can see Sarah's colored tomatoes. This is just indicating a paragraph break. So we don't need that, but all in all, I should be good to go. Now I just need to get my key. Perfect. So let's go ahead and send this. So I've got the headers, I've got the body. I don't need any parameters because I've got this body. So let's see if this worked. Great. So it looks like it was successful. So status 200 is okay. And you can see here that now it included the ID. So I hop over to my Airtable. Awesome. So you can see that it just populated now as the page refreshed. So edit video, make it look good to do. Now, if I included a comma here, let's see what it would do. So now it's going to throw an error because it's not expecting this. So you can see it says error 422, which likely means that you messed up something in the formatting of your API call. And it says the error is that could not parse request body. So this is because the format is incorrect and I've included a comma where I don't need one. So if I get rid of that and then resend it, you'll see that the status is 200, which means you're good to go. So that's how you work with a post request. Now, one of the things is, you know, if you're having trouble with this body, just go ahead and paste it into GPT. That's what I like to do. And so let's hop over and show you what that looks like. So let's say you were struggling and you wanted to add in a couple more ones, but you couldn't figure out how to modify this JSON. What I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to pass this entire request in a GPT. And I'm going to say, I'm making a post request to Airtable to add a new record. Here's the API body. And then I'm going to say, add in two more items where the task is post a video and the status is this. And the next task is 1000 views and status is to view. This is going to help me just actually write the structure and kind of fix any errors that I have myself. And you can see here that ChatGPT is able to just put this together for me in a way that is a lot easier. So if I now go ahead and copy this in and just hit send, this will work pretty well. And it'll go ahead and it's created three new rows, edit video, post video, and get a thousand views. And if I look at my thing, you can see here that I've got a couple of these edit video, post video, get a thousand views. So that's how you use a post request to be able to send information and how you can modify it if you're struggling. Again, ChatGPT is your friend. Go ahead and post it in there and get it to modify the JSON, tell you what's wrong with it so you can help learn. Now we're going to go to our next example, which is HubSpot. So we're going to do something a little bit more complex now, and we're actually going to retrieve data from a CRM, but it's going to be a bit more valuable for you, and it'll give you an understanding of what it looks like going through different API documentation.
So here I've got HubSpot. And you can see that I've got a couple different contacts in this CRM. Number one is me, and then a couple other two are just examples. Now, I want to be able to search the CRM. So if I go over to the HubSpot API documentation, and that's just developers.hubspot.com, you can see that there's a number of different things that I can do. So it looks like these API docs are broken out by product area, where there's the automation section, CMS section. But what I'm interested in is CRM, and that's down here. And I can see that there are a number of things I can do. The first one is it looks like under objects or contacts, there's a number of different functions that I can do around creating contacts, editing contacts, retrieving contacts. But I did see another one that I thought was interesting, which is in the search the CRM section. And so if I click over here, it looks like making a search request is a post request. And really similar to Airtable, I've got a API endpoint here that I can use. And it looks like I can actually search different objects, which is pretty cool. So scrolling down here, if I want to search contacts, it looks like this is going to be the endpoint. And here are some of the things that it can return. If I scroll down more, I can see that it gives me an example call. So very similar to Airtable and most API docs, where it'll kind of give you a sample of how you can use this. Here, I've got my API endpoint, the full one. This is the endpoint that I'm using specifically within the general HubSpot API endpoint to be able to within the CRM, look at objects, contact, and then search it. And it looks pretty straightforward. I've got a content type, application JSON, and then I've got a filter here. That I... Now, the thing that I'm wondering is, what do I do for my authorization? Because I have a HubSpot account. It's my specific HubSpot dashboard. So I want to be able to access that. Now, if I look at the general API docs in the reference documentation, and usually you'll see it up here in this top section, you'll see that in order to actually access it, I need to create a private and if I click on this, it looks like that very similar to Airtable, this private app is going to give me some sort of token. I need to click on the scopes, I need to define scopes for it. And then once I'm done, I'll be able to actually use that token. So this one here in an API call. And this looks like how I'm going to use it. So authorization, bearer, and then just my token. So you don't have to do this, this dollar sign. It's just the token you've got. So Heading over to HubSpot to access that, I'm going to go into the app marketplace here and hit connected apps. So here I am, and you can see that I've actually built out an example app already. But if I private apps, I can actually access this token that I've already created. So let's just go ahead and grab this token, copy. Now let's go on over to Postman and let's create a request for this. So first off, I want to add in my key. We we'll just copy that authorization, bearer, and then my key. And now I'm going to start building up the rest of it. So back in the HubSpot APIs, down in searching the CRM, let's walk through this example. I'm going to use this URL, and it's going to be a post request. So I just need to paste this in and then change this to post. And for the header, I'm just going to go content type is application JSON. And now for the body, again, raw and let's go ahead and take this so i want to copy everything between the apostrophe here and paste that in and now if i look through what this filter actually does it appears that this is the filter the results i'm retrieving from my search so instead of retrieving maybe 100 contacts it's just going to return things that match my filter and it looks like i can actually add multiple filters here so just like Airtable, where you could add multiple fields we can add multiple filters. And looking at this, I can see property name. So first name, this makes sense. Operator, I'm not sure what this is, but value is Alice. And if I scroll down, operator looks like I can assign uh, sort of qualifications to it. So I can say it either equals, doesn't equal, or contains a certain letter. So I'm going to modify this a bit. I want to use contains. And I'm going to say property name, maybe email. I'm going to say operator is contains token, and the value is going to be voice flow so now this should return any contacts that have the email on voice flow so now let's go ahead and test this and if i send it awesome so it was able to retrieve a bunch of information here so that's how the api works so you can see that i've taken the principles of the Airtable api and now applied it to the hubspot api to be able to make a post request now if i go through a lot of the other examples they're going to be pretty much the same where you take the same principles of get and post and you apply them to your new tool. Now, the biggest thing here is just going to be trial and error. 
um, different API docs to different collocations. They've got different bodies. And so that's where Postman is great. You can kind of keep trying and figuring out what's wrong, looking at the errors, and then tweaking what you're putting in to make sure you're getting out the right response. Now you have an understanding of how to use a get and post request with both Airtable and HubSpot. But these principles of understanding API documentation, using Postman and GPT to help you figure out how to make API calls can work with you anywhere. A lot of it is just trial and error and figuring out what went wrong and what you need to modify. If you found this video helpful, please remember to hit like and subscribe uh, and drop a comment in there to let me know what I should do next. If I should focus on more API walkthroughs of different softwares or if there's other concepts you might find helpful. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next video.